Did you know that aphids give birth to live young through parthenogenesis? This is reproduction without males. So a whole colony of aphids can start if one aphid is left. An adult female can give birth to 12 baby aphids per day, with a total of 50 to 100 offspring and up to 20 additional generations during a season. And you wonder why aphids are such a problem on plants. Parthenogenesis is not that common, with sexual reproduction being the most common. Insects, like honeybees, go through haplodiploidy, a combination of sexual and asexual reproduction where unfertilized eggs become male drones and fertilized eggs become females, mostly workers. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'll be going over metamorphosis, growth, and development of insects. A typical life cycle goes three generalized stages, egg, immature, and adult. But a lot goes on in between those stages. Let's start at the beginning. When it comes to when boy meets girl, or fertilization, the sperm enters the egg through the micropyle and fuses with the nucleus of the egg to form a zygote. The zygote undergoes cell division to form a blastula. Then the em embryo develops from a germ band which becomes all the parts of an insect. There are all types of insect eggs. They vary in shape, round, elongate, disc-shaped, barrel-shaped, oval. They also vary in sculpturing ridges, spines, smooth perforations. Although most insects hatch from eggs, which means that they're oviparous, there are also other types of egg development. Some eggs hatch within the female with the first stage immature laid, like in flesh flies, thrips, and some cockroaches like you see in this photo. This is called ovoviviparity. In the last type of egg development, growth and development occurs in the female and an active developed immature is laid. This is called viviparity and can be found in insects such as a setsy fly. You can see that this setsy fly is being birthed in pupal form and immediately becomes an adult fly. With aphids, they can be oviparous, ovoviviparous, or viviparous depending on the time of year. They will also be mainly wingless, but viviparous adults may produce some winged versions depending on the environment. In autumn, some females will become oviparous, males being produced at this time, go through sexual reproduction and lay eggs so that the insects can overwinter in that stage. Then hatches a stem mother, which is again ovo or viviparous. Insects are amazing, aren't they? The emergence of an adult insect from a pupa or a larva or nymph from an egg is called eclosion. Adults of diurnal insects such as butterflies and dragonflies often emerge at dawn whereas nocturnal insects such as many mosquitoes eclose at night. Size increases by molting the periodic formation of a new cuticle of greater surface area and subsequent ecdiasis, the shedding of the old cuticle. Each growth stage or the form of the insect between two successive molts is called an instar. A stadium is the time period spent in a particular life stage. The process of molting is controlled by juvenile hormone produced in the capora alata. How big the instar gets and the time between molts depends on food supply, temperature, larval density, physical damage like the loss of limbs, and the sex of the species, male or female. In apterigote insects like the silverfish, their growth is indeterminate, so they continue to molt until they die. In most other insects, growth is determinate with distinctive number of instars. This next section is on the three types of metamorphosis that different insects go through. These include ametabolus, hemimetabolus or incomplete metamorphosis, and holometabolus or complete metamorphosis. Ametabolus is the simplest form. There are only sexual and size differences between the immatures and adults. It is common in primitive insect orders such as Zygentoma. The immatures hatch from eggs as a small version of the adults. There are no outward morphological differences and all of these insects are wingless. Hemimetabolus is gradual metamorphosis. The nymphs are newly emerged immatures. They are called naiads in aquatic groups. The immatures are generally similar to adults that and eat similar foods. The wing pads develop after a couple of molts. The pads get progressively larger after each molt until adulthood. 
Since their wings develop externally, they are called exoterigotes. It occurs in orders such as Hemiptera, Orthoptera, Mentodia, Blatodia, Thysanoptera, and others. Holometabolus is a complete metamorphosis. There are four distinct life stages, egg, larvae, pupa, and adult. The presence of larval and pupal stages are the most notable aspects of this model. The larvae look different from adults with a few exceptions. Larvae have a different form, lack compound eyes, have reduced antennae, and lack external evidence of wing formation. The pupal stage is not a resting stage, but a reorganizational stage where clusters of cells that were dormant are activated. Since the wings develop internally, they are called endoterigotes. The photo shows the life cycle of the tobacco hornworm, where it has eggs, five larval instars, a pupa that will burrow into the soil, and then the adult moth. Larvae can look quite diverse, but they can be based on their legs or forms. Lepidopteran caterpillars are characteristic of polypod larvae. They have cylindrical bodies with short thoracic legs and abdominal prolegs, pseudopods, that are used for locomotion. Sawflies in Hymenoptera and Macoptera scorpion fly larvae also have polypod larvae. Their form is classified as a rusiform. Oligopod larvae lack abdominal prolegs but have functional thoracic legs and frequent prognathous mouthparts. Many are active predators, but others are slow moving to tritivores living in soil. These can be further classified by form. Scarabeiform is grub like and relatively inactive and sluggish. It occurs in certain coleoptera, for example, the Scarabeidae or scarab beetles. Lateriform includes long cylindrical larvae with a hard body and short legs. It occurs in certain coleoptera, such as click beetle larvae. Cambodia form has well-developed thoracic legs, antennae, and cerci visible with an elongate body and somewhat flattened. Examples are found in many beetle families, including ground beetles, rove beetles, and ladybird beetles. Apod larvae lack true legs, are worm-like or maggot-like, and live in soil, mud, dung, decaying plant or animal matter, or within the bodies of other organisms, such as par parasitoids. Their form is called vermiform. There are also different types of pupal forms. Most pupae are exorate, where their appendages, legs, wings, mouthparts, and antennae are free from their body and easily visible. As you can see in this stag beetle, ant, and yellow jacket pupae. Uptech pupae have their appendages cemented to the body and the cuticle is often heavily scleratized, as you can see in this monarch butterfly and mosquito pupae. Coarctate pupae are surrounded by hardened skin of the last larval instar. It is usually dark brown and cylindrical, closely resembling a rodent dropping. The hardened larval skin is termed a puparium and occurs in certain families of flies, such as this flesh fly, crane fly, and soldier fly pupae. Insects are short-lived creatures whose lives can be measured by their boltonism, the number of generations per year. Most insects take a year or less to develop, with either one generation per year, univoltine insects, two bivoltine insects, or more than two multivoltine or polyvoltine insects. Knowing the life cycle of a pest and what stage you expect to see on a crop when scouting can help you plan your management strategy. As you can see in, in the diagram that this leaf beetle is multivoltine, the green stick bug is univoltine, and the green clover worm is bivoltine. Univoltine cycles are common among grasshoppers, corn rootworms, and many other species. The generations are easily distinguished in nature. When observed in the field, most of the population would be in the same growth stage. Univoltinism is common among temperate insects, particularly that use resources that are seasonally restricted. These might include insects whose aquatic immature stages rely on spring algal bloom, or phytophagous insects that using short-lived annual plants. For some univoltine insects, many social insects and others that take longer than a year to develop, adult longevity may extend to several years. An extreme example is a species of cicada that can take up to 17 years to complete one generation. In contrast, the adult life of a multivoltine insect can be as little as a single evening for many ephemeroptera, 
or even a few hours at low tide for marine midges. Multivaulting insects tend to be small and fast developing, using resources that are more evenly available throughout the year. Examples include houseflies, thrips, aphids, and the European corn borer. You can have all the stages present towards the end of the season. The developmental progression from egg to adult is often interrupted by a period of dormancy. This occurs particularly in temperate areas when environmental conditions become unsuitable, such as in seasonal extremes of high or low temperatures or drought. Dormancy may occur in summer called estivation or winter hibernation and may involve quiescence or diapause. Quiescence is a halted or slowed development as a direct response to unfavorable conditions, with development resuming immediately when favorable conditions return. In contrast, diapause involves arrested development combined with adaptive physiological changes with development not necessarily returning with suitable conditions, but only following a particular physiological stimuli. In this figure, you can see the reaction to factors using the termination of diapause in this insect. The factors include the photo period and the temperature in this case. Facultative or optional diapause can be induced by food. When prey populations of summer aphids are low, ladybird beetles estivate. But if they are high, then the predators continue to develop. Diapause can last from days to months, or in rare cases, years, and can occur in any life history stage from egg to adult. Egg and or pupil diapause is common probably because these stages are relatively closed systems, allowing better survival during environmental stress. I hope you learned more about the metamorphosis, growth, and development of insects.